Hi there, I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we are about to do some homework. We're going to be solving equations that have parentheses in them. Here's your homework right here in my math lab. Hopefully, you've already gone over this first homework set on your own. What that does is it shows you how to use my math lab. Very important. Our first actual homework set is right here. And here's problem number one. We're going to solve this equation. Two parentheses x plus eight parentheses closed equals 6x. What does x equal? Okay, now <clears throat> when you have problems, you can of course come to me. You can go to the math center. Um, you can also, and probably the easiest and quickest way to get help, is to go to question helps over here. Where you can view an example, you can read the textbook, you can get a, a kind of a, a baby shopping calculator. Ask my instructor, that's an email that goes directly to me with a link to the problem you're having problems with. Or you can print this, either just the question or the homework set. And you can use Skill Builder. That will take you through problems leading up to the problem that you're having problems with. We use the word problem so much in mathematics. Let's see, how do I get out of this? I don't want to leave. Let's see, continue. Return to homework. There you go. I have to learn to read, don't I? Well, I have taken the liberty of taking your homework problems and putting them on a sheet of digital notebook paper. We're going to work on the problems there. You're going to need notebook paper because it's hard to look at a problem and just psychically know the answer. And you should get a TI-84 graphing calculator because that will take you all the way through your math classes. Turn it on. Turn it off. Well, turn it off. There you go. We're going to be using that maybe in this first set. Um, let's see. Right now, let's go ahead and you've done these before. You did them in the class before this class. But there's nothing like a little warm up. Okay. I have to do something called distribution. That is multiply this 2 by this expression inside the parentheses. When we put parentheses around more than one term, it becomes one thing. So I have two times this one thing. But this one thing is composed of two things, which soon you'll know, or actually you learned it last semester. Uh, this is called a term, and this is called a term, and we are going to learn a lot more about terms. Okay, I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by x. That will be 2, 2x. Two and I'm going to take 2 and multiply, multiply it by plus 8. And that will be, well, let's just do it the long way right now. 2 times 8 equals 6x. All right, so that'll be 2x plus 2 times 8 is 16, equals 6x. 
Now, as you know, when you solve an equation, you get the x terms or the variable terms. A letter is called a variable. It holds a number. We don't usually know what that number is. We're going to try to find out. I have to get my x terms on one side of the equal sign and my pure number terms called constants on the other side. To do this, I have to use the rules of algebra. That is, I have to make this 2x equal a 0 over here. And the way I do that is I subtract 2x. But whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side of the equation. Minus 2x. 6x minus 2x. You can think of this as being 6x's. You take away 2 of the x's. That leaves you with 4 of the x's. So 0 plus 16 equals 4x, which means 16 equals 4x. 4x is 4 times x. How do you undo multiplication? You, un you undo it with division. So I divide by 4, and I divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, giving me 1x, or 1 times x. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Since 1 times x is x, we will have x equals 4, or 4 equals x. Now, don't forget to check how are you going to know your problem is correct. If you're taking a test, if you're doing this problem on a test, and you might be, you have a test at, over each weekend. Um, you're not going to know if you got it right or wrong if you don't check it, so that's what we're going to do. What I do is I put, if this is true, that x equals 4, then I'm going to put a 4 in that x and see if I come out to 6 times 4. I do it like this. I write the word check so I know what I'm doing. 2 times x plus 8 equals 6x. That's the original line. Now, I think, I'm pretty sure, that x equals 4. But I need to make sure. So 2 times 4 plus 8 equals 6 times 4. Now, remember your order of operations. You Always work in parentheses first. 4 plus 8 is 12. So we have 2 times 12. 6 times 4 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. So I have 24 equals 24. That's a true statement. Of course, 24 equals 24. If I get a true statement here, that means that this answer is the true answer. So I know that x equals 4. In my math lab, there's a blue answer box. In that answer box, I'm going to type the answer 4. And we'll be done with this problem. Before going on to the next one, notice the next one has parentheses on the other side of the equal sign. 72 equals 12 times 2y plus 12 times 2. 12 
times 2y plus 12 times 2. Okay, 72 equals 12 times 2 times y. That's what that is. 12 times 2 is 24. So this is 24y plus 12 times 2 is 24. Now, I have to get the constants, that is the pure numbers, on one side of the equal sign and the variable terms on the other side of the equal sign. And I have to do it legally. So I have to make 24 equal 0 on this side of the equal sign. I do that since this is plus 24, I will say minus 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. And I bring down the 24y. To keep the equation balanced, whatever I do over here, I have to do over here. Minus 24. Now, we can use the calculator. 72 minus 24 is 48. So I have 48 on the left side of the equation, 24 plus 0 on the right side of the, equa the equation, and between them, I should not have put an equal sign there. It was supposed to go down there. I happen to know that 24y plus 0 is 24y. So 24 times y equals 48. This is multiplication right here. To undo the multiplication and get y by itself, I divide both sides of the equation by 24. 48 divided by 24 is 2. 24 divided by 24 is 1, and bring down the y. 1 times y is y, so I have 2 equals y. Is that true? Let's see. We'll check. Seventy two equals twelve times two y plus two. Seventy two equals twelve parentheses two times y, which is, I think, I believe, two. Seventy two equals twelve. I'm still working in the parentheses and I always multiply before I add. So two times two is four. Seventy two equals twelve. Four plus two is six. So this is going to be four times six. Now, 72 times 6, enter, no, silly, 12 times 6 is 72. So 72 equals 72, which is a true statement. That means that 2 really does equal y. Now notice 
for a minute that we've used order of operations pretty extensively. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's how you remember it. Or PIMDAS. This means parentheses, which we call parens in math. To cut it short, it's a long word. Exponents. You talked about those in um, beginning algebra, the class that came before this. We're going to talk about them again. Not right now. Multiplication and division are equally important. So, they occur next. Multiplication Division. And last in importance is addition and subtraction. Okay, so up here, for instance, I work in the parentheses first. Then, notice I have multiplication and addition going on in the parentheses. I have to do multiplication first, and then addition. So I multiply 2 times 2, that's 4. Then I add the 2 to the 4, and that's 6. Um, order of operations, let's write that down. That's what this is called. Order of operations is very, very important when you're working just with numbers. When you're solving an equation, sometimes we appear to do things out of order, but not really. All right, now we are going to solve an equation that has two sets of parentheses. Remember that this minus sign acts as a negative one. So we're going to take 8 times 4x plus 8 times 6 equals 11. I take the negative sign, the minus sign, and I distribute it to the positive x and the positive 7. What this does is give me a minus x and a minus 7. 7, because negative times positive is negative, and negative times positive is negative. Okay, now 8 times 4 times x is 32x, plus 8 times 6 is 48, equals 11 and 7 are both constants, so they can be combined. This is 11 minus 7, which is 4, and then minus x. All right, now notice this. We have to do a little analyzing. We have, we have a variable term, and we have a constant term on the left. We have a constant term on the left and a variable term on the right. Our goal now is to move 
our variable terms together and our constant terms together by adding and subtracting. First, I'm going to add x to both sides of this equation because, let me do it first, negative x plus x is 0, which makes the x 0 out on the right side of the equation. Meanwhile, over on the left side of the equation, I now have 32 x's plus another x that's going to give me 33 x's. Plus 48 because it's just hanging out there, not doing anything. Meanwhile, over on the right, I only have a 4 left because the x is zeroed out. That is, when I added them together, they equaled 0. Now, I have to make 48 equal 0. I'll do that by subtracting 48. Whoops, I want to do that in a different color. Subtracting 48 from both sides of the equation. Minus 48 minus 48. 48 minus 48 is 0. So now this 48 has zeroed out, and we're left with 33x on the left. Meanwhile, you can find this out in your calculator. 4 minus 48 is negative 40. Four. But let's show you how to do this if you don't know how. 4 minus 48, enter, is negative 44. Now, I'll divide both sides by 33. Why? Well, I do this on the left because I do not want 33x on the left. I want 1x. How do I get it? Well, since this is 33 times x, I do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. 33 over 33 is 1. But whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side. Whatever I do to the right side, I have to do to the left side. Okay, now I'll have 1x over here on the left, and you might already know that 11 goes into 44 and 11 goes into 33, so you would divide both negative 44 and 33 by 11. But if you don't know that, let me show you how to do it on your calculator because it's so cool. Here's the negative sign, negative 44 divided by 33. And instead of hitting enter, I hit math. <clears throat> and then I want to frac. So you can click on 1 because the number 1 is highlighted or, or the number 1 is beside the frac. Or you can hit enter because the number 1 is highlighted. What I usually do is math, enter, enter. And the answer is negative four thirds. So one times x equals negative four thirds. But do I know that that's true? Really? Well, all you have to do is put it in the answer box in my math lab, and you'll find out very quickly whether that answer is true or false. But what if it's a test? Ah, that's different. Let's check. With, all, with a fraction? Ah, yes, because you have a calculator to help you if you're uncomfortable with fractions, so don't worry. Here we go. We start with 8 times 4x plus 
6 equals 11 minus parentheses x plus 7. Now, it is our contention, our educated guess, our hypothesis that x equals negative 4 thirds. I'm going to put, I'm going to substitute 4 thirds, negative 4 thirds for x, and we're going to see what happens. So 8 parentheses 4 times negative 4 thirds plus 6 parentheses closed equals 11 minus parentheses negative 4 thirds plus 7. Okay, now we have to act in the parentheses first, and inside the parentheses we have to use order of operations. So this 8 is going to have to wait. What I have to do is find out, well, what is 4 times negative 4 thirds? You can do it by hand, which is probably easier, or you can do it on the calculator. 4 times negative 4 divided by 3. Whoops, I forgot and hit enter. Oh well, I can still hit math, frac, enter. Negative 16 thirds. 4 times negative 4 thirds is negative 16 thirds. I still have to add 6. I'll do that in the next round. I like to do one calculation on the left and one on the right every time I go through the equation. You don't have to do it the way I do it. 11 e minus parentheses. Okay, negative 4 divided by 3 plus 7. Ah, I hit enter again, but it's okay. Because then I can math, enter, enter. And get 17 thirds. Okay. Now, still working in parentheses. 8 times negative 16 divided by 3 plus 6. Barbara, come on now. Math, enter, enter. Two thirds equals, we're going to calculate this, 11, 11 minus 11 thirds. 11 minus 11 divided by 3. Math, enter, enter. 22 over 3. That's wrong. Where did I go wrong? Oh, where did I go wrong? Let's go back here. Okay. Negative 4 divided by 3 plus 7. is 17 thirds, not 11 thirds. Okay. Why did I put 11 thirds? I don't know. Seventeen thirds. Now eleven minus seventeen thirds. Is sixteen thirds. Now, over here, 8 times 2 thirds. We can use parentheses if we want. 
but we don't really have to, unless you're multiplying a fraction times a fraction. Then you do have to multiply parentheses times parentheses, but we're not doing that here. So 8 times 2 divided by 3. is 16 thirds. So we have 16 thirds equals 16 thirds. So what you may be asking yourself, it's true. That's the what, that's so what, why? So why what? 16 thirds equals 16 thirds. That's absolutely true. And what does that mean? That means that x really does equal negative 4 thirds. So that will be what you put in your answer box. And notice from over here that you can get the right answer and then trick yourself into thinking you have the wrong answer because you messed up the check, like I did. Okay, we're done with solving equations that have parentheses, reviewing them. Now we're going to go to applications, so I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.